Greetings everyone! It's finally so nice to be speaking to you again. And I do actually mean speaking to you because um, up until now on my channel, I feel like I've been talking at you and not to you or with you and I feel like that's been a problem. I mean, as people we always tend to look at ourselves and maybe sometimes overanalyze, but you know, it is good to have some self-criticisms and mine was that I didn't feel like I was really connecting with you. So hopefully we can change that today. But for today's video, I just wanted to do uh, get ready with me, talk through, makeup tutorial. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm just chilling here on a Saturday um, in my home. So yeah, let's just uh, jump right into the makeup look. So for those of you who already watch my videos, you may already know that I like to start off with my eyes first. To those of you who are new to this channel, hello! Thanks for clicking on my video. But anyway, um, I just enjoy doing it because uh, I don't have to worry about my foundation or messing up anything underneath. And I also feel like if you're trying to do a full beat and maybe you want to rush through it a little bit, you can definitely do that. Because if you have your foundation done first and you're working on the eyes, I feel like you have to take your time, be more careful, as opposed to if you don't have anything underneath, you can just go boom, 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 bam and throw it all on there and then just go in with a makeup wipe and get rid of um, any mess ups underneath and then have a flawless foundation. I just thought I'd mention that because I get that question asked a lot even when I sit down and do makeup with clients. They're like, wait, you're not doing my makeup right. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, aren't you supposed to start off with uh, foundation first? And that is such a misconception. I mean, you can start off and do your makeup however you want. I know some people start off with eyebrows first. I've even known some girls that put on their fa false eyelashes first so the glue can dry completely and then they do the rest of their makeup. So it's really all up to you on how you start. So today we're going to use three different palettes from my collection. We're going to be using the uh, Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette. I love this little guy right here. And then, I'm not sure if this is still available, but regardless, this um, Ulta Miss Fabulous palette. Um, this is a collaboration with Miss Jen Fabulous. Uh, she's another YouTuber on here. I've never seen her videos, but I had a friend who had this palette, and I tried it out. I swatched it and played around with it for a while, and I fell in love with it, so I had to go out and get it. And then, just this little cute little Z palette right here with some limited edition shadows from I think there is mostly Urban Decay and Too Faced and a little Maybelline eyeshadow that's like in here I think it's from another quad I just couldn't fit it in my other Z palette but uh, that is the color scheme we'll be working with now uh, let's just jump into it alright so I already primed my eyes using my Milani eyeshadow base or primer whatever you know the drill. We are going to pop into Too Faced Sweet Peach. Y'all don't read me for my nails. I haven't had time to do my nails. I've been busy. But <laughs> anyways, I'm going to take uh, White Peach. Yeah, I'm going to take White Peach and Peaches and Cream. And I'm going to mix these two suckers together and kind of get a skin tone shade for myself and apply that from my brow bone up into about like the crease and maybe taking it a little towards the inner corner inner part of the eye. That's what I usually like to do. I feel like I get a better blend on my shadows. Like if you apply something darker on top or even just the basic transition color, I feel like it blends a lot smoother. Um, so just find any shade, whatever palette it is that's um, closely matches and resembles your skin tone. That's like my number one tip to make your eyeshadow life or use easier. As y'all can see, I love packing, packing it on there. You don't really need to, but sometimes I feel like I get into the makeup and I just can't help myself. Gotta just keep on talking. Okay, moving right along, we're going to dip in now to, I'm telling you, we're going to use a little bit of everything, into the Miss Fabulous palette, and I'm going to take some of this shade called Fab and I'm going to pop that in my crease just a little bit of it. Y'all can probably hear the cars passing by, it is so loud, but honestly y'all, if you live in the city or any other busy street, 
you know how it is. Kind of becomes soothing after a while. So I remember the first time I moved into like a, a quiet neighborhood, into like a nice house. Um, it just was odd. Like I was scared because I wouldn't hear any noise coming in the street unless it was like a neighbor pulling up and for some reason y'all that terrified the out of me like so bad so so bad <laughs> so now we're going to move on to that is a great question today i'm not sure if i want to go like purple and peach or if i want to do purple and orange or green and orange i really gotta think about that really really hard that is literally the challenge of my day, like every morning, <laughs> what eyeshadow combo to go with. So I finally made my decision. We're going to go with this shade right here, this purple. This is called Betrayal. It's from uh, Urban Decay Vice 2, I believe. But I'm just going to pat that onto my eyelid. I know some people have like a major problem with anybody on YouTube using like their limited edition makeup and this and this and that. Look honey, makeup is expensive. And to be honest, the time of the year where I shop for makeup, especially hair and makeup, is around Christmas. You kind of get the better deals, the sets, you know, the sales. And that's when I prefer to buy makeup. Because just as a makeup lover and as a makeup artist, you know, you, you want to know what's out there, you want to play with different textures, shadows, brands, you know, you have to be educated and it's an investment. And let's be honest, y'all, this, this stuff expires, it don't last forever, you know, you have to throw it away at some point, so I don't want to just have it sit there on my vanity and not be used because it was limited edition. No, I'm going to dip it and do it and I'm going to use as much as possible and get my bottom dollar. Alright, that's enough, nobody wants to hear me talk about my shopping habits how cheap I am all right so then we're gonna take bless her heart this uh, green shade right here and I'm gonna pop that on the middle of my eyelid like right there and also one more thing about limited edition things or makeup like honestly guys the only reason why we mention the name is at least what I do when people use limited edition stuff or things that I don't have is that I go online and I look for swatches I mean there's a lot of people out there sharing very helpful information that just do swatches and don't do videos and mess with YouTube and all that jazz. Okay, so I'm not really happy with Bless Her Heart. I feel like that color needed a base. Um, or at least against this purple, it looks really washed out. So we're going to dip into something else for that green because I really want green and purple today. That's what I decided to go with. So I'm going to take this beautiful bright green right here. It's probably like my favorite shade ever. I wish... They made a single of it, but it's called Nice Stems. It's from Too Faced. I believe it was in the Sweet Indulgences palette. It's probably like one of my first or really high-end palettes. But again, I love the Christmas time. Y'all know they put out those face sets. You kind of get to try a lot of different uh, aspects of certain brands, and I love that. Okay, that looks a lot better. This looks a lot like what I was going for originally. So now I'm just going to uh, go back and forth between the two colors I've used so far and just um, adjust them so they can blend seamlessly into one another. And both of these colors are most makeup colors. You can just, some brand will put out something similar to it can always wing it, girl. That's what I used to do. We're going to use Delectable, this purple right here. Again, purple and green. Theme for today. So I'm going to apply it here on the outer portion of my lid, on both eyes, and then I'm going to separately take a crease brush and Take this shade and also apply some of it to my crease. Honestly, picking up these three palettes, I thought my look today was going to go in a whole other direction than it's going. I think because I'm wearing so much gray and my hair is gray and 
everything it's just all kind of coming together now I have gotten some messages some DMs and stuff on Instagram from people asking you know why I haven't posted in a while why there's so many gaps in my posting cuz even though I would like to think that nobody cares clearly at least about 30 of you guys do which is so cool like that's a classroom full of people I feel like sometimes everybody gets lost in YouTube and the views and the subs but you don't really realize how crazy it is that you get to talk to like even 30 people or 5 people because you don't know where they're watching from like you don't know their deal you don't know their story and they don't know you but now they can a little bit and that's what I feel like was kind of missing from the way I used to do my videos but let me actually answer the question but I had some things going on in my personal life I was taking care of a family member so I didn't have the opportunity to post and also I was in the process of moving and looking for any place to live um, so it was a kind of a doozy time to start a YouTube channel but it wouldn't be the first time I've done something that's kind of a doozy or <laughs> maybe it not the the best or most appropriate time but that's the main reason so it took me a while to set up so if all y'all are watching some of my videos and you're like hey I went from this color to this color from this long to this short to this and that number one I'm a hairstylist so <laughs> things change for me a lot but they're gradual safe and healthy changes talk to your stylist today about how you can have healthy hair and hair color <laughs> with ease if you just follow what we say that's all we ask yeah just kind of I'm actually deciding to go natural for 2018 because I did well from what y'all were able to see just coppers and for some of y'all who have been following me on Instagram like oranges and just fire and red orange and it, it was just that orange red orange yellows that was my hair 2017 like for a year, I think from August, actually from August 2016 through August 2017, yeah, from that time period, I was going through that color scheme and I just needed to change it. Then I did galaxy hair and then I kind of let that come off and then I just didn't know what I wanted so just kind of toned it, but yeah. That's how we got to this silver point right here. This is actually a fade out of what I had originally, my shade, which was um, a violet red and um, an intense true blue. So those shades faded out and then I've just been maintaining with a color shampoo, whatever the blonde is underneath. It's like a blue based one, like a purpley one. It just makes my shampoos and maintain the blonde girl. So that's why we have this ashy, silvery situation for those of you who are wondering because I always kind of do like and especially since y'all whoever has watched all my videos you've seen me go through silver hair changes and I don't want anybody to think that it's something easy or that you can just happen out of nowhere you have to really think about if you color your hair how you're or especially if you like to do brighter colors such as myself um, you really have to think about color theory and really discuss that with your stylist as to where you want to go, where you see yourself with the shades and, you know, just what you're feeling over time because there is a way to flow in and out of certain color schemes, but you have to do it slowly and gradually so you can keep your hair from not becoming strong. But then we're going to take Talk Derby to me. And I'm going to take my flat shader brush and I'm going to apply it over where I applied Delectable. Because I swatched Tongue Derby to me. Because sometimes, you know, things look a little bit different in the pan than they do on your eyes. And it's a very, very deep purple. But it's still purple and I feel like it would just complement this area right here since. Like the 
Ugh, why can't I talk today? Since Delectable made such a good crease change. So what you see me doing is kind of going back and forth. I'm patting Talk Derby to me. And then I'm going in with the other one and blending. So very smoky. Again, I did not plan on doing this today, but here we are. So, go big or go home. Just don't look back. That's my philosophy. Now I'm just going to peek that on my other eye. I'm just going back with my peach and peaches and cream and Putting that with a clean brush on my brow bone because I felt like the purple was getting a little too high, so we had to tone it down. And also applying it right here so we don't look so crazy and uneven. Because when I feel like when a lot of girls do colored eyeshadow, because I get this question asked a lot from my clients, we kind of forget about the front part of the eye or blending right here and with neutral colors you can get away with maybe not having the seamless brown right here because they're neutral they're within a certain color range you know they kind of blend together usually kind of closer to people's skin tones and you know it's very monochromatic you don't really notice it but with colors you notice that so you gotta blend everywhere if you're using bright shades so just gonna Freshen actually the eyeshadows on the lid up again because I feel like I lost a little bit of intensity on some of these shades just from blending. Okay, so if you are wondering how I can use the same shadow brush and not get it muddy, what I like to do is I like to flip it and use both sides with a different color on each side. And I also wipe in between on a paper towel. We're going to move on to under the eye area. I'm going to take again that delectable shade and I'm just going to run that halfway through, stopping till right about here. And uh, make sure to connect it to whatever you have going up on top. That looks crazy right now. It looks like someone beat me up. But <laughs> this is my point about doing your eyeshadow first. You can look like someone beat you up for a little bit, but then you wipe it off and it's all okay. Oh my god. Okay, now I ended up going all the way under the lid with that color. Oh, I didn't want to, but I want to add something else there, but I'm going to figure it out. But first, I got to repeat the same thing over here. We're still going to apply something over here. This is not going to stay this way. Well, of course it's not. I mean, if this is look done, it'd be the best makeup tutorial on YouTube, hands down. But <laughs> we're not going for that kind of a world achievement. I don't know why I keep blending underneath like there's something to blend. Um, I think I'm just getting too caught up in being a show. I figured out what I need to add on the bottom and the, like I said, go big or go home. We're already purple and green and all everything. So I grabbed some glitters. I have some mini Sephora glitters. Evening blue and majestic purple. I don't know what's going on today y'all, so think these play that right here. Oh, it's just beautiful. I know I got this in like a mini set because I love glitter. I used to use glitter every day in high school. But I don't wear glitter every single day. But I do try to wear it quite a bit. So for me, like a mini is good. I'm gonna blend a little bit the glitter out. Okay, now I went and took some talk derby to me and I just applied that 
over where I had applied the delectable earlier, not covering up the glitter. But recognize all this situation is now finished and we're going to finally move on to the face. I have primed my skin. I use the Heart Candy Sheer Envy Ultra Light Primer and the Garnier Skin Renew 5 Second Blur Primer situation. I like to mix my primers, so I use these two today. And now we're going to move on to color correcting. Again, if you've seen my uh, previous videos, or at least one of them, hopefully, then some of you might know that I like to use color correctors underneath my foundation just so I use less of a foundation and less concealer and for me that it, it just it helps. This dark with some of the peach and some of the yellow. Lately I've been mixing them. I usually use yellow more than the peach but I'm just going to use this little mini blending sponge and have that underneath. I know my, don't thank y'all, I forget y'all, but for whoever has seen the, uh, which one is it? Girl, I got like five tutorials, I know I can't think of it. But the glam date night makeup tutorial look, I know I promised the if you don't like the video, I'm going to do uh, an in-depth kind of walkthrough about color correctors. And I will. I will. I am getting back on the horse, y'all. Your girl is getting back out there. So for foundation, I'm going to mix these two bad boys right here. This is the CoverGirl Outlast 3 in 1 and the Milani Conceal Perfect 2-in-1. Um, these claim to be super coverage foundations. Obviously, they're not. Uh, for the drugstore, they're pretty full coverage. That's my mini review. This one sets like pretty matte and has some sunscreen. This one sets to like a, like a demi-matte, like a satin -y sort of finish. It's not like too dewy, but it's not like also super matte and it kind of claims like I think on an ad or something it's supposed to be my I don't really know but I like them that's the whole point and I'm gonna take uh, like a pump of this one and a pump of this one and mix them together maybe even half a pump we'll see if I use up all of it probably half a pump okay so half a pump of this one on my finger Milani and then half a pump this has actually been almost a full pump of the cover girl. I'm just gonna dot that on my face. Get all that stuff off my finger. I don't like to do it on my hand. Even when I'm with clients, I do it on a palette. It's just ugh. My hands get all dry and oh my god, I'm using a blending sponge. You guys probably thought that was never gonna happen on this channel, but don't think you know me. I'm unpredictable. Not really. But lately, if you hear my stomach growling, I'm sorry. Clearly, I need some nourishment. You have some lunch, but um, forgot what I was saying. Who cares? For some concealer, I got these two L'Oreal True Match Thick Concealers, and I got N123 Fahrenheit and N45. What? We got the whole numbers? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I used to use only this under the eyes, but that is like too, too highlighted for me nowadays. I don't really like to go that deep, so I usually mix. The lighter one with the 4-5, which is my skin tone shade. I'm gonna just go around down. You know, probably like she did a whole other layer on her face with just concealer. Well, maybe 
I did. But it's a thin layer. I feel like with drugstore foundations, or at the drugstore, makeup wise, there's maybe not a lot of super duper like crazy full coverage foundations like there is for high end. Like, if you got a lot of skin issues and you want to use like a super awesome foundation, the drugstore right now, I don't, I personally don't know of any foundations that are going to cut that mark. So, maybe it would be worth for. Um, those individuals to save their pennies and invest in something a little higher end because right there, you know, the drugstore right now doesn't. Nobody's doing that at the moment. Again, as far as I know, could be wrong. If you know, like a super crazy full coverage foundation that's like, like drugstore price. Put it down in the comments. I would love to know to possibly try it. Not that I feel like I personally need it, but I want to know if I ever do need it. That can happen. Alright, foundation, concealer, and corrector, all those good things are done. Now it's time for some setting spray. And I'm going to use this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Belle J Botanicals Makeup Setting Spray. I'm not really planning on doing a lot of reviews on this channel, but I am thinking about putting out a review on this little bad boy. And now, time for my trusty fan. <gasps> the drama, honey. I feel like I'm rich Lux right now, or... Peter Mon. Y'all can totally tell when, what's that on YouTube I've been on recently. God, I hope this is my lens. But, with all the, the drama, honey. I mean, where else are you gonna be? I've never been a person who's really been into gossip or drama in my real life. I steer clear from it. But honey, celebrity drama, or these YouTube celebrities, they create a lot of drama, sweetheart. So, more drama for me. More drama for me, because I stay away from dramatic people in real life, but I like to read about them. <laughs> fail, fail, fail. But it's my fail. I'm just going to take some powder foundation, L'Oreal True Match, keep it at old school, and just... For now, I'm going to pat this into the areas where I feel like need to be really set right now, that really need it. And later, I might go back and retouch. But y'all know, as I like to say, less is more, always. So now, after we set uh, the most important areas of our face, I'm going to move on to the eyebrows. So I'm feeling some powder today for my brows instead of all the other methods. So I'm just going to take this uh, ABH brow powder in Ebony. And just lightly run that through the brows. Personally, I like to make sure the eyebrows are one of the last things I do in my makeup routine because if I do them first and then I do a dramatic eye like this and my eyebrows are already too dramatic or too thick or something like that then that's not going to apply so well I'm dipping into a little bit of like both shades dramatic eye and you can always do a more dramatic brow, a more simple eye. You can really play it up however you want. But that's my rule. I 
Alright, so next I'm going to do a little bit of contouring. I'm going to use this uh, Pop Beauty Sunkissed Bronzer in Secret Sunshine. Just a, a satin bronzer. Well, you're not really supposed to contour with bronzer, but this one is, has a little bit more of a neutral shade, it's not very orange or anything like that, so you can get away with it. A little easier, I haven't used this a lot, but I'm trying to use it because it's sitting there. I'm on makeup for a minute. Again, I'm sorry y'all. Clearly I'm real hungry. Where's my stomach? Alright, let's move on to some blush. And let me stop looking at the viewfinder because it's looking kind of crazy. I'm going to apply Frat Boy Blush Mud Balm on my cheeks. It's a nice matte peachy pink. Can't, can't go too wrong with that. The layer is really nice now for that satin bronzer contour situation. I have going on underneath. At least to me. You know, might think I look busted AF. Alright, now let's pick out the highlight. We almost done. We almost done. I'm gonna use this Heart Candy Just Glow Rose Gold Highlighter and just mix the three shades together. might look like it would be some sort of crazy highlighter, but it's not. It's actually quite natural and buildable, and there is a little bit of shimmer. Like a glittery shimmer, but honestly, especially if you apply it like a small stipple brush, it doesn't really stick to your skin. Not that much, but I'll just give a nice, subtle beautiful glow. Alright, I'm going to put on some lashes and mascara and I'll be right back. So I got my lashes on and my mascara and the lashes that I'm wearing today, I don't have the pack here in front of me, but I'm going to put their picture right here, but it's the uh, Salon Perfect 615 Lashes from Walmart, and I'm wearing L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black and Waterproof on my top and bottom lashes, and I also reapplied some of the glitter that I had uh, right here in this part of the eye because it kind of wore off earlier when I was blending and doing my concealer, foundation and that stuff, so I had to retouch that. And now I'm just going to take this uh, Rimmel Scandalize in Nude and pop that in my uh, lower waterline. I feel like we went so dramatic and kind of smoky. We need to open up the lashes. That's why I, f I mean, open up the lashes. We need to open up the eyes. That's why I kind of went with this big fluffy lash. And also with the glitter right there so that I can be more open as you can see there's a big difference I probably should have done one and then came back and done the other but you can just see with the eyeliner just like a nude or you can even put a white if you want I went with a nude today um, how it just opens the eye and just makes it a lot brighter so again doing that to the other eye you might think I'm crazy but 
There's a method to my madness. There really is. Okay, so that is done, and now we're finally going to move on to the finishing touch of the look, which is going to be our lippy, and I'm going to use NYX Liquid Suede in the color Soft Spoken. I love this shade, and it wears so long. Just love this whole line of Liquid Suede lipsticks. See, it's kind of like your lips are better type of shade. I love it. I also love the lap applicator. I can find it nice. Applying this lippy is so easy. Alright, and that's our lippy. So let me just bring you in for a close up. format turned out for me so let me know if you do as well down in the comments if you've seen my previous videos and you're already a subby um and if not uh thanks for taking the time out of your day just to watch this for however long you stayed through and if you stayed all the way through here you are cool af oh my god okay well uh let me quit being lame and just let you guys go but again thank you for watching and i'll see you next time <laughs>